Lesson 3 Reading Texts in Mathematics and the Humanities At the end of the lesson, learners shall be able to Determine the structure of a textbook in Mathematics and the Humanities Describe the language used in Mathematics and Humanities textbook Explain the specific ideas contained in textbooks in Mathematics and in the Humanities Use knowledge of the structures of textbooks in the humanities and mathematics to glean the information you need, and Identify the main idea of a chapter from textbooks in mathematics and in the humanities Getting started In school, you may have already been exposed to several genres of textbooks Two of these fall under the areas of mathematics and the humanities, or those that deal with art, music, and literature the nature of knowledge in mathematics and the humanities Unlike the two genres we discussed in the first lesson, mathematics and the humanities seem to be polar opposites of one another. Since mathematics deals with numbers and patterns, it is expected to be an accurate discipline. It does not have elaborate explanations of different phenomena, but rather only makes use of numbers and symbols in order to express certain truths. The nature of knowledge in mathematics and the humanities the humanities, on the other hand are a set of disciplines that attempt to capture the richness of the human experience, or to help people become more fully human through different art forms such as literature, visual arts, and music. Thus, unlike mathematics which is said to be objective, the humanities is largely hinged on the idea of subjectivity since these areas largely deal with the exploration of personal human experiences which find their expression through the arts. The language of mathematics and the humanities Given the huge difference in the nature of knowledge shared by mathematics and the humanities, the registers used two disciplines also seem to be polar opposites of one another. Since math is a precise discipline, the language used in math textbooks is direct to the point and is only supplementary to the numbers and symbols used to express a mathematical concept. The language of mathematics and the humanities The language of the humanities textbooks on the other hand, is carefully and at the same time artistically phrased in order to capture intricacies and nuances of a work of art. Moreover, the work of art itself being examined especially if it is a literary text, employs a much complex register which makes use of figurative language and even deviations from grammar conventions to create an emotional or intellectual impact. The features of a sample textbook in mathematics includes Review, Are you ready? Explanations of concepts, quick check. Lesson opener, lesson number and lesson title, pin up, vocabulary check, pictures, real world link. Lesson proper, work zone, types of problems, sample problem, practice problems. Assessment, practice questions. Let us start our discussion with review. The heading Are You Ready is designed to provide a quick review of the concepts the students are expected to know prior to the presentation of a new lesson. Note that in mathematics, the topics build up on one another and one cannot appreciate or understand a new topic unless the foundational concepts are understood. The explanations of the concepts expressed in words are brief since the language of mathematics is mainly comprised of numbers and symbols. The section Quick Check functions as diagnostic test designed to assess whether you have already mastered the foundational concept needed to understand the new lesson. Reading Tip Go through all of the actions of the textbook, and make sure that you understand the foundational concepts presented prior to the lesson opener. If you find the concept difficult to understand, go through it once more, and consult a material or section about it if needed. Lesson Opener the lesson number and title are indicated in the heading of the lesson opener. The pin-up will help you think about the significance of the lesson and some important concepts. Use this portion to write your expectations. Revisit them after you are done with the lesson to check if they have been met. Lesson opener. Definitions are dealt with in this portion. Pictures are used to make the lesson more interesting. Real World L link is provided to help the students see how the lesson can be used to address real life situations. Reading Tip Equations and diagrams are the interpretation of a definition in mathematics. To make sure that your computations are correct, see if they would correspond to their respective definitions. Lesson Proper 
The types of problems to be dealt with in the chapter are indicated in the heading. One sample problem for each of the concepts taught is provided to serve as an example to the readers. Answering the practice problems will help you assess whether you have already understood and fully appreciated the concepts taught in the chapter. Reading Tip When dealing with mathematics, simply reading the text and the examples are not enough for you to fully grasp the concepts being presented. You will have to solve for the answers of the practice exercises so that the patterns and ways of approaching particular kinds of problem will become more familiar to you. The section finder rule helps you come up with a suitable mental representation of the lesson for easier understanding. Tables are also used in mathematics to represent patterns and equations. Further examples and illustrations are given to deepen the student's understanding of the lesson. Reading Tip Proficiency in math does not entail the memorization of patterns to solve certain types of problems. It also involves being able to use foundational concepts in order to come up with new and creative solutions to more difficult problems. Assessment Towards the end of the chapter, there are practice questions designed to make you more familiar with the processes involved in solving different sorts of problems. Reading Tip When solving practice problems, do not hesitate to go back to the definitions presented earlier in the chapter to test whether your interpretation of the concepts is accurate or not. The operations you will employ are largely hinged on the correct understanding of the definitions. More practice problems are provided until the very end of the chapter. Notice that these are a combination of plainly numerical problems and practical, real-life problems to help you apply the math concepts you learn to day-to-day -day situations. In many math textbooks, hot, higher-order thinking, problems or a challenge section is included to test the extent that you have mastered a mathematical concept. Unlike the previous problems, the hot or challenge portion problems require you to employ not only the concepts learned in the chapter but also your entire repertoire of thinking and mathematical skills in answering them. From this point on, another series of problems is presented until the end of the chapter. Reading Tip Proficiency in math does not only entail the memorization of patterns to solve certain types to come up with new and creative solutions to more difficult problem. Following this slide is a short video that I hope will make you change your mind about mathematics. Twenty-six percent. On the nation's report card, that's the percentage of U.S. 12th graders who are proficient in math. In America, we pride ourselves as being an exceptional country, but does 26% sound exceptional to you? Raise your hand if you think, as a country, we need to do way better than this. I'm with you. We all need math, but why are so many kids confused by it? Is it because only 26% of people are hardwired for math, while 74% are not? After working with thousands of kids, I can tell you this isn't the case at all. Kids don't understand math because we've been teaching it as a dehumanized subject. But if we made math human again, it would start to make sense again. You're probably wondering, how was math ever human in the first place? So think about it. <laughs> <laughs> math is a human language, just like English, Spanish, or Chinese, because it allows people to communicate with each other. Even in ancient times, people needed the language of math to, to conduct trade, to build monuments, and to measure the land for farming. This idea of math as a language isn't exactly new. A great philosopher once said, the laws of nature are written in the language of mathematics. So you see, even Galileo agrees with me. <laughs> But somewhere along the line, we've taken this language of math, which is about the real world around us, and we've abstracted it beyond recognition. And that's why kids are confused. Let me show you what I mean. Read this third grade California math standard and see if it would make sense to an eight-year-old. Understand a fraction, one over b, as a quantity formed by one part when whole is partitioned into b equal parts. 
understand a fraction a over b as the quantity formed by a parts of size 1 over b. <laughs> and if you gave this description to an 8-year-old, you'd probably get a reaction like this. <laughs> To a math expert, this standard makes sense. But to a kid, it's absolute torture. I chose this example specifically because fractions are foundational to algebra, trigonometry, and even calculus. So if kids don't understand fractions in elementary and middle school, they've got a tough road ahead of them in high school. But is there a way to make fractions simple and easy for kids to understand? Yes. Just remember that math is a language and use that to your advantage. For example, when I teach fifth graders how to add and subtract fractions, I start with the apples plus apples lesson. First I ask, what's one apple plus one apple? And kids will often say two, which is partially correct. Have them include the words as well, since math is a language. So it's not just two, it's two apples. Next is, Three pencils plus two pencils. You all know that pencils plus pencils give you pencils. So everyone, how many pencils? Five pencils. Five pencils is right. And the key is you included the words. I tried this lesson with my five-year-old niece once. After she added pencils and pencils, I asked her, what's four billion plus one billion? And my aunt overheard this, and she scolded me and said, are you crazy? She's in kindergarten. How is she supposed to know 4 billion plus 1 billion? <laughs> Undaunted, my niece finishes counting, looks up and says, 5 billion? And I said, that's right, it is 5 billion. My aunt just shook her head and laughed because she did not expect that from a five-year-old. But all you have to do is take a language approach, and math becomes intuitive and easy to understand. Then I asked her a question that kindergartners are definitely not supposed to know. What's one-third plus one-third? And immediately she answered, two-thirds. So if you're wondering, how could she possibly know that when she doesn't know about numerators and denominators yet? You see, she wasn't thinking about numerators and denominators. She thought of the problem this way and she used one apple plus one apple as her analogy to understand one-third plus one-third. So if even a kindergartner can add fractions, you better believe that every fifth grader can do it as well. <laughs> Just for fun, I asked her a high school algebra question. What's 7x squared plus 2x squared? And this little five-year-old girl correctly answered 9x squared. And she didn't need any exponent rules to figure that out. So when people say that we are either hardwired for math or not, it's not true. Math is a human language, so we all have the ability to understand it. <laughs> We need to take a language approach to math urgently because too many kids are lost and are anxious about math, and it doesn't have to be that way. I worked with an angry, frustrated high school student once who couldn't pass algebra because she only knew 44% of her multiplication facts. I told her, that's like trying to read and only knowing 44% of the alphabet. It's holding you back. She couldn't factor or solve equations, and she had no confidence in math. As a result, this teenager had no confidence in herself. I told her, we have to start with multiplication, because once you know all your facts by heart, everything gets easier, and it'll be like having a fast pass to every ride at Disneyland. <laughs> what do you think? And she said, okay. So she systematically learned her time tables in four weeks, and yes, even multiplication has language embedded in it. You'd be surprised how many kids don't realize 7 times 3 can be spelled out as 7 times 3, which just means 3 7 times, just like this. So when kids see it this way, they quickly realize that repeated addition is slow and inconvenient, 
So they gladly memorize that three, seven times, always gives you 21. So for this teenager who was at risk of dropping out, becoming fluent and confident in multiplication was a game changer because for the first time, she could focus on problem solving instead of counting on her fingers. I knew she had turned the corner when she figured out that a two-year car lease at $445 a month would cost you $10,680. And she looked at me disapprovingly and said, Mr. Polysock, that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> at that moment, math was no longer causing problems for her, but she was using math to solve problems as a responsible adult would. As an educator, it's my duty to challenge kids to reach higher. So I leave you with this challenge. Our country is stuck at 26% proficient, and I challenge you to push that number higher. This is important because mathematical thinking not only builds young minds, but our kids need it to imagine and build a future that doesn't yet exist. Meeting this challenge can be as simple as apples plus apples. Insist that we teach math as a human language, and we will get there sooner rather than later. Thank you. Note, mathematics is not just about memorizing patterns of solutions to solve patterned problems. More importantly, it involves coming up with creative solutions to new problems people encounter every day. Next, features of a sample textbook in Humanities. Lesson opener, lesson number and lesson title, focusing question, historical background. Lesson opener, author's background, prepare to read, unveil what you know, vocabulary building, pre-reading question, picture and biography. Lesson proper, picture, Title, Text, Learning Objectives Assessment, Remembering Questions, Main Idea, Analyzing Questions, Evaluating Questions, Creating Questions The lesson number and title are indicated in the lesson opener. The focusing question is intended to direct you to the main point being established in the lesson. A historical background of the period where the literary texts featured in a chapter is included to help you understand them better. Reading tip. Remember that literary texts are products of their time. Thus, knowing the historical background in which they were born will enable you to correctly interpret the images and symbols found in them and develop a richer appreciation of them. Lesson opener, author's background. The section prepare to read provides background information on the text itself through a brief biography of the author and other pertinent elements. The Unveil What You Know section aims to connect your personal experiences with that represented in the text since, as Joseph Galdon puts it, literature is all about significant human experiences. The vocabulary building exercise is intended to unlock the meanings of unfamiliar words so that you would be able to better understand the text. The pre-reading question serves to stir your interest as a reader and provide clues on the theme of the text. A picture and biography of author is provided to give you an idea of why he wrote the way he did. Reading tip. Use the pre-reading question as a guide that will focus you to important points conveyed by the text. Lesson proper. The picture is intended to help you visualize the contents of the text. This portion features the text's title as well as its author. The citation of the author's name is called byline. This constitutes to text itself. The learning objectives are the specific skills you have to master after going through the lesson. Lesson proper. Once more, a picture is included to help you visualize the text's contents. This is the continuation of the text introduced in the previous page. A tip is included to make the reading more interesting and relatable. Reading tip. Use the picture to formulate wise inferences about the selection. Use the learning objectives to make your reading more focused. Remember that the learning objectives will also determine how you are going to be assessed by the teacher. Assessment This is the last installment of the text in the sample chapter. 
These are known as remembering questions because they simply point you to specific details in the text. To answer these, simply scan through the given passage to spot the information being A. The question or questions under understanding determines if you understood the main idea conveyed by the passage or not. Reading Tip Answering the succeeding questions will help you assess your understanding of the text and hone your reading proficiency. I often get asked, why should I read more? Why would I bother reading a book when I can just watch a video summary of it? It's true, you can save some time this way and there is nothing wrong with that. However, reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body, and you can't train your body by just watching YouTube videos. So let's get straight to the facts. Reading improves your focus and concentration. Reading, much like running or listening to music, can be a form of meditation. With all the distractions nowadays, people have really big problems with concentrating. Don't be one of them. In a single 5 minute span, the average person will divide their time between working on a task, checking email, chatting with a couple of people and using their smartphone. This type of behavior causes stress levels to rise and lowers our productivity. When you read a book, all your attention is focused on the story. The rest of the world is closed off and you immerse yourself in every fine detail you're absorbing. Try reading for 15 to 20 minutes before work and you'll be surprised at how much more focused you are once you get to the office. It's also a great relaxation technique. Have you ever felt so tense to the point you dreamt of escaping your life for a while? Surprise! You actually can. You don't need a plane ticket to the other side of the globe. A great book can take you all the way to another dimension. Many people overthink their problems when all they need is a break, so that they could go back to searching for a solution with a clear, relaxed mind. So you're stressed out? Then pick up the goddamn book! Research conducted in 2009 showed that reading is the most effective way to overcome stress, beating out old favorites such as listening to music, enjoying a cup of tea or coffee, or even taking a walk. Measured by evaluating heart rate and muscle tension, it took the study participants just 6 minutes to relax once they started turning pages. So when you lose yourself in a book, you can simply forget all your daily worries. That's assuming you aren't forced to read and aren't reading any heavy texts like legal papers. Scientific studies show that reading actually makes you smarter. Your body needs movement, that means your brain needs movement as well, and reading is the best workout for your mind. It's demanding in a neurological way, plus it requires concentration and intellectual activity. Mental stimulation can slow down the process of dementia and Alzheimer's disease, keeping your brain sharp as you age. Reading is healthy, just like a morning run, so find time for it. Also, everything you read fills your head with new bits of information, and you never know when it might come in handy. The more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to tackle any challenge you'll ever face. Additionally, if you ever find yourself in dire circumstances, remember that although you might lose everything else, your job, your possessions, your money, even your health, your knowledge can never be taken from you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more.